<laughs> Venturing! You look pale. Or is that also part of your act? Huh. I didn't think you'd have the nerve to show yourself. I thought this was exactly what you wanted. After all, I faithfully fulfilled my duties as you instructed. Just tell me if you can't hold on any longer. What? So, the genius of the Council of Mundanites wants to be my undertaker now. <laughs> my, what an honor. Yes, and I'm pretty sure the people at the Strategic Investment Department would love to be notified of your death in due time. But let's not forget, you won't be seeing them, because I'm the manager of this task. Great. Then tell your people that Aventurine is ready to go in 17 system hours. Oh, you've got a lot of nerve. How exactly do you plan on completing your task while your hands are tied by the Harmony? My conversation with Sunday convinced me that there's a traitor in the family, and that they hold the secrets of Penicone. So I took the opportunity to set everything in motion. I even managed to recover the gift money. <laughs> Things haven't gone this smoothly since I walked through the doors of the Reverie. Now I'm only one step away from victory. Let's just wait and see. Have a great evening, Zenny. Thank you so much. Get some sleep. Appreciate you. Sounds like a very elaborate way of saying that you failed. <laughs> That's all I can say. Have you forgotten, Doctor? You betrayed me. Go. Do what you must. I look forward to the sight of the IPC fleet surrounding Panacone. You've achieved what you desired, haven't you? That's true, but what's your plan? Did you conceal an orbital support beacon in that gift money bag? Well, who knows? Maybe that's why I'm handing out cash even when I'm about to bite the dust. You are indeed a gambler. An insane one, at that. Well, maybe I am. Who knows? <sighs> Fine. Here, take this. Open it when you're on your last legs. You'll thank me. What's what? this? Medical advice? What the? You catch on pretty fast, Doctor. <laughs> Asking me to solve a case without giving a single clue. How typical of you, you wing-headed scoundrel. But the way you're all on edge about that stowaway... <laughs> it's just as I guessed it would be. As for now... Let the rain of wealth from the IPC fall evenly on everyone. What? Monday night's insight? To Icarus? Would you be willing to support my performance? And keep the song of beauty alive in the cosmos? What? Uh, here. I got these gems for you. Wow, how fabulous! Why would you give such a wonderful gift to a random stranger like me? Well, you see, I can't bear to see anyone in this sweet dream suffering from poverty. That's incredibly kind of you. Thank you so much, sir. If you ever get the chance, please feel free to come by and indulge in my singing. <laughs> sure thing. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know anything interesting about death? Death? That's a pretty scary topic, and it doesn't really match the mood of this sweet dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see, I'm a tabloid reporter collecting ghost stories in Panicone. 
Really? As you know, the more chilling the stories, the more attention they get. <laughs> Maybe you could help me out. Well, if you're up for some gossip, it's not about death, but there have been some rumors about a guest at the Reality Hotel who fell into a deep sleep and didn't wake up. It was like they were in some sort of coma. Nobody knows what caused it, but luckily the customer eventually regained consciousness. Well, all customers are under the protection of the family, after all. <laughs> Thank you. This will make for a very juicy headline. May Shibe protect us. What? Unexplained coma. <laughs> That's actually what happens to your body if your brain dies in a dream. But unfortunately, the customer ended up waking up in the end. <sighs> I can feel something inside my head. <sighs> Is the harmony starting to kick in? See, I bet he, he rode through that pinball. Uh, the world has truly lost its way. Here, I got these gems for you. You wait. I get it now. This is some sort of prank show, right? You must have some camera set up around here to film yourself doing good deeds, right? That's that's not a bad guess, honestly. You youngsters are always looking for a quick way to get an audience. But you know what? A truly great show never comes easy. Spoken like the movie critic that you are. <laughs> a great show will start soon, old man. But before that, I need to ask you something. Do you know where I can find death in this dream? Ah, I see. Another fearless youngster looking for death. Huh? Well, let me give you a piece of advice. Don't think you're the first one who's ever thought of that idea. Death? Not even remotely innovative. I bought it from Dr. Edward. He claimed it was some exclusive fancy schmancy stuff. Now, oh, what a disappointment. The effects were awful. First, some monster covered in eyes stabs you in the gut. Ooh. And then all you see are blurry glimpses of buildings and lights. The sky was spinning so fast it almost made me puke. Is that all? Yeah, what else can you expect? Don't put too much stock in the Penacone movie industry. They even called this junk groundbreaking art. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> what a joke. Sounds like a Gen well, Xer. I'll leave you be then. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, a monster covered in eyes. What should I say, Boomer? That sounds like the memory zone meme. But buildings and lights. I don't think those have anything to do with death. Well, that whole dream bubble was probably created using rumors and gossip. Wait a second. No. voice in my head it's getting closer take care my friend if you ever find yourself in danger remember that the hounds are always ready to help all right well here I got these gems for you <sighs> the expression on this hunk of uh, on this hunk of a man was complex as if he were looking at a mud-soaked sparrow, unable to fly and nearing its end. You don't look good, my friend. If you need assistance, I can contact the hotel and have them wake you up forcefully. Great. Is that obvious? <laughs> that won't be necessary. I have some business to attend to. But thank you all the same. All right, then. If you ever need help, don't hesitate to reach out to us hounds. Well, actually, I do need a favor. As the most outstanding hound in Panacone, have you come across any stowaways recently? Stowaways? 
How could there be stowaways in Penacony? We've never had anything like that before. <laughs> All right. Good luck with your work, then. Uh, what was I even thinking? Family would never share intel with the IPC. <laughs> oh, does everyone have to go through so much torment before joining the family? Uh, darn it! <laughs> now I just want to dig out my brain and use it as evidence. Ooh. A sip of liquor. A blissful reprieve. To drown a thousand sorrows. Let worries leave. <laughs> I know I have what it takes to become a poet. Uh, right here. I got these gems for you. Oh? <laughs> oh. You? You're giving these gems to me? Didn't expect to meet such a generous soul in this place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or are you just pitying me? Well, it really doesn't matter. As long as I have Soul Glad, that's enough. This is just a dream, after all. <laughs> you really shouldn't drink so much Soul Glad, my friend. It's not good for your health. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I really should quit. But not before meeting the Devil of Soul Glad. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Devil of Soul Glad? Care to elaborate? <laughs> yeah. It's a seahorse with a long neck. <laughs> they say it loves to appear to drunk people, especially the ones who are passed out on the side of the road. <laughs> How funny. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Very funny indeed. Thank you. <laughs> You want to talk to me? Sure, but nothing too sensitive, okay? All right, well, here. I got these gems for you. Huh. Wealthy people have fancy ways to enjoy this dream. But to be honest, I've never seen anyone who gives out money to others like you. <sighs> so, are you trying to be the prince from the tale, handing out his gold leaf garment and melting his lead heart in the fire? Uh, well... <laughs> I'm flattered. I'm no prince, and I just thought these gems would help you speak. So, as an investigative reporter, maybe you've heard something about death? Ah, uh, another curious soul. I see. Well, that was actually the topic I was most into when I entered the industry. But my boss shut it down. Your boss? How did your boss talk you out of it? Well, she simply said, covering baseless urban legends like that would make us look like some third-rate tabloid. <laughs> I thought about it, and she had a point. Reporting on stuff like blowing out birthday candles and getting spooked by nightmare ghosts isn't exactly professional material. Dang! Mm, guess she's got a point. Thank you for sharing. Right. a little bit of judgment. <laughs> were you wanting to talk to me? Sorry, I thought you were checking out something behind me. Uh, okay. Well, here. I got these gems for you. Is this a gift for me? Are you sure this isn't some kind of mistake? Mm -mm. Yes, it's for you. <laughs> Just take it. Is this for real? Someone is actually giving me a gift. Not for my parents, but for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh man, what did I just find out? No, oh, it's not much. I just want to ask you something. <sighs> I knew it. What's on your mind? Are you trying to ask about my father or my mother? Um... Neither. I just wanted to know if you've ever heard about death in the dreamscape. Oh, 
You sound just like my father. Always warning me about danger, even in dreams. He's an Intellitron, so his dream entry methods are different from us organics. What? Can't count on him to protect me if something does go haywire. Funny, right now I'm still under his protection. <laughs> How ironic. Okay. Hey, stay positive. Gold will always shine one day, right? Hmm. The devil of soul, glad. Dangers in the dream. And nightmare ghosts. Well, surely death is a popular topic in this sweet dream granted by the family. Well, I've collected a bunch of rumors, but no useful clues. Oh no! Remember what I said? You Sigonians are better off hiding in the sewers. Wow. Look at you, snooping around and sticking your nose everywhere. Is that Sparkle? Is oh! the smell of death so enticing, my fine fellow? Nani! <laughs> oh, it's you, masked fool. I should have guessed it. You're the imposter who appeared on TV after Robin's death, right? I heard you got caught by the family. I gave you a clear clue. Befriend a mute. Simple and straightforward, you know? And what did you do? You messed it up and ended up as their prisoner. I told you to make friends with a mute, not become one yourself. You really let me down. Dang. What do you mean? You know better than I do. Who watched the little songbird that couldn't sing perish right before their eyes? You did, Blondie. Uh, no, I, I mean... What did you mean by becoming one myself? Well, it means you'll soon end up like her, unable to speak ever again. What? But it's a good thing, if you ask me, because... Because I'm getting closer to the truth, right? Oh? Why else do you think I'm handing out cheap trinkets all over the streets, fool? Oh! <laughs> all part of the act. Fool's bait. The more pathetic I seem, the more likely you'll come sniffing around. So... Now that I've drawn you out, will you reward me with an answer for my efforts? Why should I help you? Don't you want to see Panacone descend into... chaos? Well, I can make that happen. I just need an answer to one question. Back then, when you asked me to find a mute, did you really mean Robin? Hmm. And what if I say no? Then I'll thank you. <laughs> oh, the word no has never sounded so pleasing. <laughs> well done. I admit I underestimated you, but what difference would it make? Let me tell you something. There were two mutes, but one is dead now, and the other, though he's still in Penacony, I'm afraid you'll never find him again. What? Who's now the other? I'm completely sure that I was on the right track from the beginning and never strayed, fool. Right now, there are only two things missing from my grasp. The meaning behind the truth, and the means to expose it. <laughs> How impressive. That's quite a fancy way of saying I haven't learned anything so far. <laughs> what? Not exactly. I've gathered enough clues to prove its existence. And that's enough for me. As for the answers to my questions, I'll find them within 17... No. 
16 system hours. Oh, really? Only 16 system hours? Well, let me lend you a hand. Here you go. This is my precious, mutually assured distraction button. And I have one just like it. When either of us presses it, the other and the whole of Panacone will go up in smoke. Uh... If you're really so desperate for the IPC to take over Panacone, blowing up the chessboard isn't a bad idea. Start from scratch. That's where the IPC excels, right? There's no way she would just give this to me. Just press the button when you're at your wit's end. And of course, feel free to reach out to me for my hospice care too. What? Hospice? Oh, a deadly button, huh? <laughs> well, I guess the family didn't take your threat seriously at all. Otherwise, how on earth did you manage to bring it in here? <laughs> I have my own ways. That's all you need to know. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'll have to decline your offer. Who knows if your little gadget will actually work. By the way, I have no plans to search for the other mute friend you speak of. But it's good to hear that he's still here in Panacone. I'll handle the rest myself. I'll orchestrate a grand finale for the downfall of the family. <laughs> and at the climax... The walls will crumble, people will wake up, and those who couldn't speak will find their voices again. When that time comes, go ahead, press the button, light up the sky with a magnificent fireworks display for me. Catch you later, fool. <laughs> You're still talking big, but sure, if that happens, I'll stay true to my word. Just don't let me down now, okay? I don't know. Ah, uh, everything's a mystery right now. Uh. What? So, number 35. You're back. Like your new lucky charm. Can a commodity code really be considered a lucky charm? Silence! I didn't give you permission to speak, you Sigonian hound. <sighs> the guys in black didn't say much, so I've no idea what you did to save your skin in that massacre back in the day. But I figured you must have had good luck, so I bought you. From now on, you and your good luck are my assets. <laughs> Are we clear? Your first task is simple. In addition to you, I've purchased 30, uh, well, 34 other slaves. Cheese and rice. Go and play a game with them. <laughs> you came out alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. You're insane. <laughs> Testing out if you're a good product. Aren't you worried that the money you spent on me will go to waste? I've got stacks on stacks, Blondie. The slave market is never short of self-righteous brats like you. But you look good, and that's why many customers are betting their fortunes on a scrawny brat like you. So go along now, and uh, don't let your master down. <sighs> How much did you spend? What? My price. How much did you pay... for me? Huh. You really want to know? Hmm. Well, it was 60 Tanba. No more, no less. I'll take my chances. 30 Tanba. If I come back alive, you'll give me 30 Tanba. Deal. <laughs> Are you trying to strike a bet with me? Oh, well, you've got some guts. Yeah, sorry, but uh, that won't do. Don't forget your place, slave. You're not qualified to be at the table. 
You're just a chip. A life thrown away in someone else's hands. Either you come back with more chips for your master, or you never come back. Wow. It's all or nothing. Don't embarrass me, my lucky hound.